Hello there! If you want to skip the intro and just get on with a review, skip to 256. Otherwise, thank you and enjoy watching. So first things first, this is not sponsored and all of this is my honest experience. Now, let's get on with the price. I got this used for 8,000 pesos which converts to around 137 US dollars. I'll list the other conversions here. Um, brand new, it costs like 13,500 here in Shopee, albeit it's currently sold out. That price converts to around 231 US dollars. Also, here are the prices that I found it going for in other countries, namely the USA and Malaysia. Now moving on to what comes in the box. It comes with the usual PXN set, the wheelbase, the wheel, an H-pad and shifter, pedals, cables and screws, clamps, power brake, and the instructions. Now let's start with the wheelbase itself. As far as I can tell, albeit can't verify, it's still the same as the V10 minus the shroud and the red accent color. It's still the same dual motor, gear-driven system capable of a claimed 3.2 Nm peak torque, but with some firmware updates. This being my first force feedback wheel, I can't really give a proper comparison to the likes of the G29 as I have yet to try one. What I can tell you is the experience of using it. In general, it's smooth. However, you can feel and hear the gear notches when you're looking for them. But realistically, once you're driving, you don't notice them. Overall, it's quiet as well, but sometimes it does get loud like when you're locking up and it just jitters loudly. But honestly, most if not all the time, my G14 is louder than this. The force feedback is good, not amazing, but good. You can feel the curves understeer when the front is light. However, it's not a one-to-one -one feeling to the road, but it is good. For beginners and casual sim racers, it's strong enough, but for veterans, maybe not. But still, keeps and bounds above non-force feedback wheels. Just a small side note, you can still be fast without force feedback but what's important really in the end is having fun. 
don't let your tools get in the way of you having fun. The overall build is identical to the V10, material and aesthetic wise, save for again the shroud and the accent color. There is a metal plate for hard mounting, clamps for table mounting like mine here, all the ports in the back along with a USB port to plug in your gamepad for consoles. This supports PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. But for the PS5, there is an adapter that you will need that is not included in the bundle. You'll have to buy it separately on their website. I've seen reviews wherein there's movement or play in the wheel, which I think might just be a quality control issue, which PXN needs to fix if they want to compete in this market. But I'd be glad to report that in my very large sample size of a whopping one, <laughs> this doesn't have that. While the materials might not be top-notch, this feels like it'll last. Moving on to the wheel, it's a 300mm wheel with a total of 14 buttons and 2 clutch paddles. The buttons feel okay, about what you expect for this price. I can compare them to the Xbox 360 controller buttons, which is more tactile while these are slightly mushier. The front is made of metal, same with the paddles. The rim is made of rubber. I can't attest to how long they can last, but rubber being rubber, it'll eventually turn into goop due to your um, oils, so just use gloves. All in all, it feels good, has some weight to it, and just like the V10, has a quick release system. Only issue is, the system currently has no other wheels for it. Yeah, so yeah. Moving on to the pedals. They're light. They're good enough as an entry point, but they are light. The good thing is, all three are distinct. The clutch pedal being the lightest, the gas being slightly heavier, and then the brake being considerably heavier. They're all made of plastic, but they're not bad feeling. It also has a USB port if you want to connect them directly to your console. It also has holes for hard mounting, just like the wheelbase. They do slide around as it's mostly just flat, so do find a way to secure it on other surfaces. Oh, and the pedals are also adjustable. And by adjustable, I mean their placement, not the heaviness. Lastly, their hall effect sensors, so dust and dirt shouldn't be a problem. Next is the shifter, and it's really good, at least for me. Six gears, H pattern, with the reverse being a push down, then move it to six. Relatively short throws, still made of plastic save for this gate cover here which is metal, although do correct me if I'm wrong. There's also two buttons, one for low and high, the other is what I assume is for a parking brake. It doesn't have any hard mounting on the bottom, but it does have table mounting. And still, identical to the one that is included with the V10. Hmm, what else did I forget about? Oh, right. Always remember to update the firmware. Currently, I think there's one update for this. And it's on, the, it's on their website. So just go to their website, download it, and then there will be a set of instructions on how to do it. And then you'll be good to go. The other thing is recalibrating your wheel. So before plugging in it into your computer, hold the A and B button, plug it in, and then release the A and B button. And then center your wheel, and then um, press the view and menu button. And then let it go, it'll recalibrate itself to the center you set it to, and then it'll be, again, it'll be good to go. Well, that's about it. That's my review of the PXN V99. For me, it's a great wheel, especially for the price that I got it for. Depending on where you are, it might be for you too. Thank you for watching and for staying this long. I'll see you in the next video, whatever it is that I make. I might start streaming on Twitch or whatever. But yeah, thank you, take care, and have a good day.